We're going to deal with matrices in terms of transformation of the plane and especially linear transformations. So getting to some basic definitions first that we need to note. A transformation maps each point at Cartesian XY <coughs> in the plane to a new point which we call X dash Y dash. A linear transformation is defined by a rule. <coughs> Okay, so because we're talking x, y, the rule will be in this form. So we start with x, y, um, and it's transformed, hence the arrow. And you can see it's got two parts here. And it becomes some value of a times x plus a different value of v, b times y, comma, c, x plus d, y. That's the format of it. And so it can be expressed in matrix form. So we multiply matrices to get this. Because you know how to multiply matrices, it's very easy to see how we can move between these two forms. So if you do the matrix multiplication, you'll see that to get x dash y dash, we do the multiplication and we get a times x plus b times y and c times x plus d times y there. Quite easy to see. Hence the reason why we use matrices we're going to look at something called a unit square, and it simply has the vertices 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, and 1, 1. So basically we have, if I may use red, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, and 1, 1. Sorry about my y-axis there. It needs somewhat work, but there we go. That's a roughly a unit square. And the effect of a linear transformation can be seen by looking at the image of a unit square, which we'll see uh, in this video. So just highlighting that. In the matrix of a linear transformation, the first column is the image of one zero written as a column vector, and the second column is the image of 0, 1 written as a column vector. And we're going to see that in the next few minutes. First example, find the image of the point 2, 1. So we start with 2, 1 under the transformation with rule 3x minus 5, 2x minus 4y. So I should say 3x minus 5y, 2x minus 4y. So we start with 2, 1. And we're going to transform the point 2, 1. So we basically let x equal 2 and y equal 1 in this case. So we follow our transformation instructions there. So we have 3 times 2 minus 5 times 1, comma, 2 times 2 minus 4 times 1. And that equals 1, 0. So we basically transform to the point 1, 0 there. So graphing that, we may put it in as a broken line with an arrow, showing the direction of the transformation. Now we look at the relationship between matrices and linear transformations. So we can write an ordered pair as a 2 by 1 matrix. Uh, 2 by 1 matrix is called a column matrix or sometimes a column vector. And you can see there uh, how that goes. Now, um, very usefully, once it's in this format, we can use matrix multiplication. And so uh, to perform the linear transformation, as we just saw, um, and as we saw in the introduction of the video, we can set it up as such. So to get the transformed xy as x dash y dash, we use a, b, c, and d in the first matrix. Okay, so notice how a and c relate to the x, and they're in the first column, and b and d in the second column of that first matrix multiplied by the original points or the original ordinates of x and y and we get ax plus by cx plus dy. Let's try that as an example. 
we have an example here of two parts. Um, the first part is pretty easy. Find the matrix of the linear transformation with the rule x minus 2y, 3x plus y. So in part A, we've just got our 2 by 2 matrix. And remember, if you want to go along in columns, we're just looking at the uh, the the values in front of the x's essentially. So that would be 1, 3, and negative 2, 1 for the y's. So we have our little square matrix. In part B then we use that, so let's write it in again. We use that on the original point 2, 3. We do our matrix multiplication and get the transformation. And so we've got 1 by 2, I'll write it out long, plus negative 2 by 3. And by the way, um, it might be nice if you're still getting used to matrix multiplication look at the dimension of each matrix all right um, so we should have a two by one when we finish there okay just knowing what to expect is good so two rows in one column and then we go three by two plus one by three and we have 2 minus 6 is negative 4, and we have 6 plus 3 is 9. So we our transform point, of course it should be a 2 by 1 because it is a point x comma y or x dash comma y dash. Makes sense, doesn't it? So the image is the point negative 4, 9 under that particular transformation. At the beginning of the video we defined the unit square, so transforming the unit square, um, let's look at an example. A linear transformation is represented by this matrix here, and we need to find the image of the unit square under this transformation and sketch the unit square and its image. The effect of a linear transformation can be studied by its effect on a unit square, as we said at the beginning of the video. So let's study. And just for clarity, I've popped in our unit square there, if you're still getting used to that. Could we go one vertex at a time? Well, let's have a look. That would mean that we treat each vertex as a point, and it is a point. So let's start at 0, 0, this first point down here. And we've got our essentially our transformation. There it is as a matrix. And let's go one at a time. All right, so we would get, using matrix multiplication, two by zero plus one by zero. And then we would get zero by zero plus three by zero. Well, that's remarkable. We get zero plus zero and 0 plus 0. No change. So it hasn't changed that that one at the origin. So I've put in all the others there. So sure it didn't change the uh, this first one here at the origin but the other vertices are changed and you can see that I've got the results there. If we were to draw that it would look very different. It'd be uh, distorted. You can see there uh, larger shape and it's a bit more like a parallelogram type shape. So in fact that's our answer to part B, sketch the shape, there it is. <clears throat> now in maths we're into doing things more efficiently if we're serious and look in each case we started off with that. If we form a matrix here, a 2 by 4 with that as the first column that is the second column, so moving across the same way, and then up to 0, 1. As long as you keep track of where you're going, so 0, 1 goes there. Lastly, 1, 1. 
if the order change, you just need to be able to keep track of where you're up to. So you go around it in a different order, but you just do need to uh, understand where these come from. And look, these are the results. So it's just about setting up a system that you understand and interpreting it correctly. Because we have 0, 0, we have 2, 0, 1, 3, and 3, 3. So it's about tracking the correct order, the order that you set up. Notice how I went across there, up there, and then that one last. If you swap these around, you would just have those swapped around. You just need to understand that, you know, columns were swapped and you just need to know what they're mapping because um, the values will still be appropriate. So with uh, unit vectors, if we mapped zero, uh, sorry, one zero as a column vector or column matrix, column vector is the common term. It would look like that, and 0, 1 would look like that. So these are called the standard unit vectors. Okay, uh, these are the standard unit vectors in R squared. So R, R squared, sorry, just making that R stand out a bit. I've gone a little bit over the top. It is the same symbol as the boldface R. There you go, that's a bit better. Two-dimensional real numbers it refers to. So there, those two are the, the standard unit vectors, 1, 0, and 0, 1 for R squared. Now they're vectors in terms of being a matrix, but on a plane they're a point. So if we consider the transformations of these points, under this matrix here. So with the first standard unit vector, we will have A times 1 plus B times 0, which is just A in the first position, and C times 1 plus D times 0, which will just have C in the second position. With the other standard unit vector, so we're not talking about vectors in terms of geometric vectors, So using that generic transformation matrix now for the other one, you could probably almost guess it before I show it to you. So we'll have A times 0 plus B times 1, that's B. And we'll have C by 0, D times 1, which is D. It's an interesting result. So to find the matrix of a linear transformation, the first column of the image of 1, 0 is written as a column vector and the second column is the image of 0, 1. So we have the image of 1, 0 in a column and the next column is the image of 0, 1 written as a column vector. Let's have a look. Because with just two bits of information we can write down the matrix of a transformation. So for a linear transformation we just need two pieces of information. So in essence, you know, if you remember what we had just on the screen a moment ago, which is was this here, in essence we're going backwards, okay? So with one zero, uh, it maps the points to one one, maps the point to one one. We can look back here at what we saw. So in the uh, what we're essentially trying to do is find this matrix here we've got our value for A and C right there so we've got the first column and so for part A we've actually got the ABCD matrix first column is 1 1 likewise which we're using in light of this. Okay, so we can see that the matrix 0, 1 mapped on there, so you can see we have our values for B and D there, which is negative 2, 3. So that's the matrix of the transformation. So we can then apply that um, to find the transformation of the point negative 3, 4. I've just gone ahead and done that for you. So there's our introduction to using matrices for linear transformations.